Hello guys, thanks for tuning in. So Ban 1.0 was released about a week ago and there's a lot of excitement around it. I know a lot of you are probably asking yourselves, should I move completely from Node.js and use Ban everywhere? Is it even possible? We'll try to answer those questions in this video. So the first thing you need to know is that Ban is five things. It's a package installer, a package runner, a test runner, a bundler, and a runtime. All those tools ship in one executable. But it doesn't mean that you have to use all those five tools at once. You can use only one of those tools and replace a specific part of your development while still using Node.js. So the first thing you can switch right now without having any problems and or issues is installing packages. So in Node.js, you install packages with npm or yarn. So to switch to burn, you just switch from running npm install to burn install. The good thing with burn is that it's faster than npm or run. So another command that burn replaces is adding dependencies and removing them. So instead of running npm install or run install, you can just run burn add the package you want to add, like Lodash for example, and it will be installed in your node modules and added in your package.json file. And to remove the package, you can run burn remove the package name and it will be removed in your package json and your install packages the main difference with the using burn to install your packages instead of npm or yarn is that burn has its own log file called burn.log.b instead of using a package log.json or yarn.log so every time you install packages this file will be updated with the package details so if you're using burn to install your packages you can get rid of package log.json so another thing that burn is is it's a package run no. If you have been setting up framework apps with the React or Next.js, you may have noticed that they use CLI tools to set up your project. So to scaffold a new Next.js app, we run npx create next app and then the app you want to create. And then this will ask you a few questions on your development environment and then use npx to reinstall dependencies and set up everything. So to do the same thing but faster, you can use ban x create next app and then your app name. So this will ask you the same questions that npx was asking you, but you'll notice that the setup process will be way faster. So burnx is a drop-in replacement for npx and it doesn't break anything. So another thing that burn does very well is run tests. It has its own built-in test runner. To run it, you use the burn test command. So it will look for tests to run inside your file tree. So for example, we can create a new test and see how it works. So let's create an example.test.js file. So let's write a simple test. So describe example test that should pass by default. So you can see even uh, VS Code is complaining there are no test types here. So let's try to run it the way it is and see if it will work. So to run it, we run the same burn test command. And you can see that it has found our test and run it. We didn't have to install any packages. We didn't have to set up any configurations. It just runs out of the box. Now, if you are writing tests from scratch like you've done here, it looks simple enough. So how does it do with an existing testing system? Let's say a test set up with the Jest, for example. Let's clone the Jest example repo from Next.js and use that to test this. So we'll use Banex. So Banex create next app and then the example we want to use is the with Jest example. So this will set up a Next.js app with the Jest tests. So you can see there is a Jest configurations, there is the setup files and a, and a bunch of tests written for us. So this is a good app we can use to test if a burn is really a drop-in replacement. So the first thing we need to do is run the Jest tests to see if uh, everything works as expected. So there is a test script here that runs Jest. So let's run it. So npm test. So all the tests are passing. It means all the tests are okay. So you want to do the same thing, but with burn. So the first step we can test, instead of npm test, we run burn tests. So that has broken a lot of things. So the first thing we see here is uh, can't find the document variable. So the DOM environment is not being loaded properly when we run it in the guest. So just dropping burn into an existing test setup doesn't work out of the box. So what I want us to do is uh, to try to get this to work and see what it takes to get this test setup to work with burn and what we need to change. So the first thing we need to do is let burn run the tests without having to use Jest. Let's remove uh, both test scripts and then rerun burn test. So burn won't use the Jest executable to run the tests. So it looks like um, still getting the same errors. So let's try to fix uh, the first error here of the DOM not being accessible. So by their docs, burn doesn't have uh, 
support for js dom for js dom yet so what they recommend is using the happy dom library to emulate the dom environment during tests so the first thing we need to do is add the library to our setup so ban add happy dom global registrator so this package is supposed to set up all the global uh, dom variables like window and document for us so after installing it the next step is creating a setup file so let's call it happy dom.ts and then copy and paste this setup script so the global registrator.register should register all DOM variables globally and then the next step is to create a banfig.toml file and then add a test config with a preload value pointing to happy DOM dot ts so let's try to run ban test again so it looks like uh, we're getting more errors but uh, the document errors are no longer here so one thing you're noticing is this found multiple elements with the role heading error so the tests are being run that's a good thing so this error here is the one i'm most worried about it looks like it has to do with the internal nextjs uh, configuration of the image component so i don't think we can do anything about that so let's skip this let's try to fix this it looks like uh, these uh, functions are not being exposed to our tests like the to have text content function so the way ban works is that uh, the way it was set up is uh, they implement most of these features from scratch so if something is missing they write code for it and it runs if a module is missing like in node.js they implement it and then in the next version they release it runs so for this library specifically looks like it works but some functions have not been ported yet so what i'm going to do is uh, try to use something else that is not that to have text function for example what you can do is use maybe get the inner html and then use to be instead of to have content so let's find similar tests again so we're going to use inner html and then use to be so this is doing the same check but using a different api same thing for this file use to be instead of to have content and finally do the same thing for this file okay let's run the test again burn test let's look into the errors so you're still getting this first error let's ignore this one first looks like we got rid of uh, the to have content error we have another error here found multiple elements with role heading in a uh, client page to test .tsx. let's open that file and see what they mean so it's importing this client component but if you look at the component it has only one h1 tag here and you're only getting that single item and uh, finding its text but if you look at the error it says that it found multiple elements with the role heading the reason you are seeing this error is that it looks like the contents of previous tests are leaking into other tests so for example for the home page test here you can see that it has multiple headings if you look at the documentation for this get role by heading function it will throw an error if you're trying to get a single element for example and there's multiple elements in the page so while i was uh, looking into this earlier I suspected that previous tests contents were leaking into other tests contents. So to try to fix it, I added an uh, after all hook to all the tests and then cleared the full document HTML and set it to an empty string. So if you do this for all the tests at the bottom and try to run the test again, the tests pass. So it looks like uh, we got two passing tests out of five. And there is this error here. This module cannot be imported from a client component. So this also looks like an xjs error let's try to open it so looks like it's referencing this page here or it's using a server only i don't know what this means server only so this is the first time i'm seeing this i've never seen it before i don't think this use server i think in the app folder everything is a server component by default so you have to explicitly mark it as a client by adding the use client hook so this is from the next JS example repo i don't know why they used the server only import i'm just going to remove it so let's try to run the test again bam tests good so we got three passing tests and then this next image error here okay let's try to fix it it's a type error on uh, the, the first test here which is referencing the home page component so the error is being thrown by this image declaration let's try to open uh, this file and see why it's throwing an error it's using the url global variable to instantiate a url object with the image src so what's the image src it's a uh, vassal.spg let's try to do what they are doing and see why it's throwing an error 
so new url image.kpg uh, i think this is the type error being thrown invalid url so what they are saying is you need to provide a protocol to the url let's try to do that so if we do a full url like http localhost like that and then try to rerun the test and tests yeah looks like it fixes it but we still have one error here or there is a to be in document api error so let's also remove this this reference from our code so instead of to be in document let's do to be defined i think that does the same thing so if we run the test again all our tests should pass okay so that wasn't that bad we were able to get our test running with just but we had to change the apis to be able to play well with burn so unlike uh, burn install and uh, burn x commands the burn test command is not a drop in replacement it may break some things and you have to fix your tests in order to get it working okay since we have an xjs app set up here let's try to test another tool that ban comes with and that is uh, the runtime so the ban runtime is similar to node.js or dino so when you want to run your next js app let's say you want to run the dev server you run the npm run dev command so this will set up a dev server for us on localhost 3000 domain that you can open in our browser so all this is run using node.js so this is the preview window of your next js app run using node so let's try to run this with ban so instead of npm run dev we can use ban run dev command so let's refresh our browser and see if it works so looks like it works but the interesting thing with the this ban run dev command is that it is using the node.js runtime under the hood but not the ban runtime so if you want to use the ban runtime we can do ban and then add an extra burn argument and then the script you want it to run so this will run using the burn runtime instead of the node.js runtime so immediately you can see that there's a lot of problems with the underlying implementation of burn with the next.js here so one of the problem is uh, there's a request async storage api that burn has not implemented yet this is mostly a problem with the app folder version of next.js that is next 13 so if we try to access an app root for example this blog root here so let's say blog example blog the page will refuse to render because of the request async storage api so the burn runtime is not a drop-in replacement for the node runtime especially when running your apps so if this is happening in development you can deploy your apps with burn especially if you're using next.js for example so i've not tested this with other frameworks like uh, say remix or svelte or view but since those frameworks run on node runtime by default i know they may be using some apis that have not been implemented in ban yet i know ban is working on having a one-to-one -one mapping with node.js apis but they are not there yet so you can't trust ban to run your app in production as a drop-in replacement for node.js so don't treat ban as a drop-in replacement for everything in your setup just use the components of ban that you are sure are going to work with your setup so that's all thanks for watching and see you in the next video